Good morning and happy Easter. Thank you for joining us for worship with First Presbyterian Church of Garland online. We're glad you're here to celebrate this joyous occasion. Let us worship God. Please join me in the call to worship, reading responsibly. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let us pray. Glory to you, O God. You have won victory over death, raising Jesus from the grave and giving us eternal life. Glory to you, O Christ, for us and for our salvation, you overcame death and opened the gate to everlasting life. Glory to you, O Holy Spirit. You lead us into the truth. Glory to you, O Blessed Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in the call to confession printed in the bulletin. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Eternal God, our judge and redeemer, we confess that we have tried to hide from you, for we have done wrong. We have lived for ourselves and apart from you and apart from each other. We have turned from our neighbors and refused to share the burdens of others. We have passively observed the pain of the world but done nothing. We passed by the hungry, the poor, and the oppressed, hoping someone else would do something about them. In your great mercy, forgive our sins and free us from selfishness, that we may choose your will and obey your commandments through Jesus Christ, our Savior. the good news, the saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. 
Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Good morning, all. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. And we all say, He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. great celebration with your family. I wish we could enjoy our egg hunt together, but I know that you and your families will have a wonderful day. So let's remember the story of Easter together. Remember Mary Magdalene? Mary was a good, good friend of Jesus. And after his death, she went back to the tomb. She went there to be sad and remember Jesus. And lo and behold, his body was gone, the stone was rolled away, and she thought something more terrible had happened. She cried and she cried. She hadn't been this sad since her brother Lazarus died. But when that happened, her friend Jesus came and comforted her and then did a miracle by raising Lazarus from the dead. There's no more Jesus now. He had been killed. And someone had taken his body away. Things could not get any worse. But Jesus wandered back to the tomb looking for Mary and he found her. And he said, why are you crying? But she didn't realize it was Jesus. She was so upset. She just figured it was the gardener who took care of the plants there. And she said, do you know what happened? Who took Jesus' body away? What happened here? And then he called to her again. He said, Mary, it's me. 
and she was beyond happy and surprised. So, resurrection had happened. Now, we celebrate Easter every year because Jesus came to this world to teach us and love us, but also to do the mysterious and painful and difficult work of saving us. And by his life and his death and his resurrection, he did. But we can experience life and death and resurrection now. It's not just a thing in the past. One way we can see it is in our garden. You've probably seen flowers and seen that flowers get old and they wilt and they die. And after that, all you have left are some little lumpy seeds, just little dead looking things. But if you take them and you put them in the dirt and care for them, they grow a new plant. Flowers grow again. Life and death and resurrection. God put it in the whole of nature. And you know, something like that can happen in our hearts, too. Have you ever done something kind of mean or been really unfair? We know that those things, those things are things we need to get rid of, right? We need to let go of those and let those wither away. And sometimes the things we need to get rid of in our life, they're hard to let go of. It can be painful. But... When we let go of our meanness, our unkindness, that gives an opportunity for something new to grow in our hearts. That's when love and kindness and patience and peace can grow inside of us. That's the cycle of life and death and resurrection that can happen every day in us. So, I hope you remember the Easter story, and I hope you live the resurrection inside of you this week. Happy Easter. Let us pray. With joy, we celebrate the presence of your risen word, O oh God. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit so that we may proclaim the good news of eternal and abundant life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Old Testament lesson comes from the book and the prophet Isaiah, 65th chapter, beginning with the 17th verse. For I am about to create a new heaven and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies in a hundred, a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered a curse. They shall not labor in vain, or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord, and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the foss, but the serpent, his food, shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountains, says the Lord. Amen. The Gospel lesson is from the Gospel of, of John, chapter 20. The first 10 verses of chapter 20 tell the story of Mary going to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away. So she ran to tell the other disciples. 
Simon Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved ran to get there to the tomb and see what would happen. The other disciple had ran and ran Peter, searched in the tomb first. He bent down, looked in, saw the wrappings, and then he didn't go in. But then Simon Peter came, went into the tomb, saw the linen wrappings there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first went in and saw and believed. They didn't understand the scripture that Jesus must pray and rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary, who had went with them, stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, well, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing, supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She said, turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go and tell my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them the things that were said to her. God always blesses the reading of the Holy Word, the Word of the Lord. Amen. The title of this morning's sermon is Easter. 2020. Why? The context of each Easter is different. Changes have occurred since Easter 2019. What an exaggeration, or rather an understatement. With our family, with our friends, the communities we live in, our nation, and the world. It's obvious unprecedented, sometimes very frightening. The holy days and seasons of the three major religions are greatly affected. The Jewish Passover, Christian Lent, Holy Week, and Easter, and Islam's Ramadan celebrations are adjusting to meet the needs of their faith and worship and their gathering to support each other. Each of our lives is adjusting to this new time. The pandemic, coronavirus, and this is not an exaggeration. Everything, it seems, has changed. And yet, we adjust. New fears arise. We adjust, I believe, with God's help. This Resurrection Day can carry a, di a different meaning this year according to each of our changes and needs in our lives. 2020, the truth still is, Jesus Christ is alive. This is why Easter 2020 is good. By God's will and work, it is good. It is good. Mary and Jesus. When she went to the tomb and saw the stone moved away, told the disciples and came back with them a little later, and then they left. The question is, why was she there at all? The other stories in Luke, the women come together with spices, Mary there alone. 
to deal with her grief made worse by the open tomb and the absence of the body. Her grief, her grief. Let's spend some time with Mary at this first resurrection. It wasn't just that Jesus had died, it was that the most important person in her life had died. Jesus was the one who loved her more than anyone has. That she had been loved by anyone. He was the one who cured her of her mental illness. He was the one who taught her, challenged her, inspired her, and brought her to health and hope. It was Mary. Judy and I discussed this pericope. And she thought of somebody that she's totally grieved for so deeply that was not family. And I found someone in my life that I grieved for who was not family. Hers was a Presbyterian minister that she worked here in the, the 60s at St. Mark's Church, John Denham. Mine was a Christian educator that I worked with in Charlotte, North Carolina. She was there at that church when I went to be an associate with a fine pastor. Early, early childhood education and her knowledge were great. I love kids, but she taught me so much. Not just what to do, but how to think and how to be and how to help the children and not just enjoy them. At different times in my ministry, at different churches, I would call her and ask her a question or I'd tell her a situation. And I had no doubt that I would do what she suggested. As friends, we loved each other. And when she died at the age of 58, 9, it was a surprise. It was a shock. It was horrible. And I told my wife, called her in a meeting, and said that she had died. And Judy left the meeting. And we talked a little bit. And then while she was still at the meeting, I went down to the Houston area to be with my friend of 50 years, her husband. Part of the grief that Judy and I agreed upon was mine because I wasn't through loving her and being with her and experiencing her, learning from her and being challenged by her. For me, this was like Mary's pain. Then, this scene where Jesus appears, Mary does not recognize it. Jesus says, woman, why are you weeping? Conversation follows. Recognition of her only happens when he says, Mary. That's when she knows that she is being seen by him. Only then she says, Rabboni. One writer says, this is the most stirring recognition scene in all of history, literature. And then Jesus says, puzzlingly, Barbara Brown Taylor says, when he says, do not hold me, do not hold me, Dr. Brown says that the, the possibility is really strong. There is the pondering possibility that Mary is trying to hold on to Jesus as she has known him. The Jesus he has known. Taylor says, Rabboni was his Friday name. And this is Sunday, the first day of the week. A new day, a new life. Mary and the rest of us may find it easier to hold on to the known, the familiar, rather than risk taking hold of the new. We and Mary are so busy searching for what was, we're not able to see what, what is possible or what will be. Dr. Taylor says, the only thing we cannot do is hold on to Jesus. He has asked us, please do not do that. 
because he knows that, that all in all, we would rather keep him with us where we are than rather where he will take us to the same place that he is going. Jesus is now the Christ broken out of the tomb, but we keep holding on to the former Jesus. What moves Mary from the unbearable grief to unending joy is the realization that this time of loving and being loved is not over. It is still here and, and now and for all eternity and not just for Mary but for all of us. This is the joy that we can celebrate today. It is here. It may not be the same as it was 30 years ago, 20 or 10, but it still is. Jesus says, do not hold on to me because I have not yet, yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my God, my Father and your God. To my God and your God. Ascending important is in John's Gospel. After today, 40 days of resurrection appearances, and then the ascension. The appearance today to Mary on Easter morn. Next Sunday, the appearance in John to his disciples and others. Hmm. Earlier in John, in the 15th chapter, he says, I do not call you my servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because you have made known, I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands that you may love one another. I have called you friends. And now we remember again, we just read, Jesus said, go tell my brothers what is happening. That I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Servants, friends, God's children, God's adopted children. A kind of adoption that lasts forever. This is big. This is really big. We all are now family. Adopted into a new family. Adoptions, adoptees. When someone adopts a baby, adorable, a baby becomes adorable, beautiful, wonderful, because the adopted parents see and know the gift of becoming family and the delight. Adorable child from this town or half, from halfway around the world. It's too wonderful for words, lots of tears and joy. Some of us have been there. But another thing to adopt a teenager, disturbed, sometimes seemingly corrigible, with a penchant for stealing and lying and sneaking around to do drugs, who wants to adopt someone who loves no one, not even himself or herself. Who wants to adopt somebody really messed up? God. That's who. My father and your father. We're all in the same family now. Love beyond understanding, forgiven and adopted into a family we do not deserve, but get to be a part of anyway. That too is the Easter story. We're all in that incorrigible teenager and you 
and me and every one. After Mary had heard this resurrection story, she told the others, I have seen the Lord. The task now is how each of us will proclaim the reality of the Lord in our lives. Maybe we need to do what Mary did and seek some garden to sort out what resurrection and ascension mean to each of us, to consider what it means to be forgiven and loved and welcomed, adopted, grabbed to and hugged into the family of God. Gardens are important, flower beds, a place in the yard where I change them all on my, on my lawnmower, places that I dig the leaf, weeds out of the flower bed, but it's also a calm and beautiful place when it's over. Gardens are important. In the garden, Adam and Eve received instruction and left bereft of the presence of God, they thought. In a garden, Jesus wept and prayed more than once. In a garden, Mary wept and heard her risen and living Lord, Lord, call her by name. One author writes, To hear the risen one call her name, we need to spend time in a garden. That is a place of cultivation and care, of peace and growth. To hear the risen one call our name, we need to make time, cultivate a place, and take care of our own need for growth, and our own need, need for peace and quiet. We have to also be honest in our prayers there and other places. And always be attentive to God's presence, leading, guiding, comforting us. Might this congregation, this church, be a garden to members and visitors? Of course, of course, you are already doing that, but we always are to do it. Find your place to be attentive to God and God's gifts to you, to welcome others and cultivate and cultivate and broaden and widen and deepen the family of God here. It may not be like it was last year or 20 years ago, but the church is always changing under the Lordship of Jesus Christ the living Lordship of Jesus Christ, and we can be a part of it. Ah, oh, correction, we are a part of it. My friends, let's go forth from this place this day to ponder again the meaning for us that the Lord is risen and then proclaim with Mary. We have seen our Lord. Amen. Let us join in affirming our faith. Today we are using a portion of a statement of the faith adopted by the Presbyterian Church USA. Let us join together. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully God, Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick, binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified, suffered the depths of human pain and 
giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to eternal life. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together for others and for ourselves, concluding with the Lord's Prayer. Let us all pray together. Loving God, we offer our prayers through Christ, who is risen from the dead and who lives and reigns forever, and prays for us in heaven. Through Christ we pray for the church, here and there, and out in the world everywhere. Let us be people of joy, living witnesses to the power of the resurrection and the good news of your grace and peace, shared and lived out daily. Living God, hear our prayer. Through Christ we pray for the earth, from the dust or the damaged earth, raise up on your new creation, full of beauty, wonder, and glory. Living God, hear our prayer. Through Christ we pray for all nations. Guide those who, who lead, guide them wisdom and courage and character and real moral and respectful courage. Oh God, let the saving power of your gospel be spread throughout the world, that the dominion of death is no more. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Through Christ we pray for this community, that the doors of this church be open wide to safety and hope and genuine caring for healing and the ways we support others and ourselves. O oh God, for those that are recalled in your, in your, we recall in our hearts, O oh God, bring healing and hope. And let the doors of the church be open wide as we go forth in love and service, and others come in to find a home. Maybe God hear our prayer. Through Christ we pray for loved ones, loved ones in our midst, in our family, the circles of friends, those that we know and know want to be healthy and whole as you do. Oh God, bring healing and hope for all of those we recall in our hearts, and the host that then face the difficulty, the difficulties of life and family. Give hope to those who wait for the good news, turn their mourning into dancing and their joy into sorrow. Oh God, hear our prayer. God of all power and glory, receive these prayers and continue your mighty work among us through Jesus Christ, our living Lord. Oh God, hear the prayer that Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On this Easter day, we are so thankful for the goodness of God, the creation of God, and calling us as God's people. God has given us gifts to care for the world and other people, to be those who teach and lead, to be those who love and serve. And God has blessed us with gifts, resources of time and talent. Let us now think on these things that we are grateful to God for and offer them to our God.
you go, remember, it is in the goodness of God you are born. It is in the providence and care of God that you are kept all the day long. It is in the saving love of Jesus Christ that you are redeemed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.